I want to back up a little bit. Um, I want to back up probably, um, I don't know, I don't want to say your best win, but probably your most, uh, uh, let me think, uh, marketable win or the biggest, uh, the most publicity win you had was you, your fight two, two fights back against Cody Norby. Um, we yep. just talked to Cody last week. Um, I already said, I talked to you off the phone. I told you, hey, listen, I, I considered Cody, you know, at least an acquaintance of mine. I, I want to admit right on right on record so no one says, hey, hey, that guy said he was rooting for Cody and Andre. I just want to say right here, I was rooting for Cody against you. Okay, I just want to say that out there. That's so cool, before, man. I, I know I know you said you're cool. I just want to, anybody who's listening <laughs> doesn't call me a snake. Um, I, if I see you in person, I'll say, hey, hey, I picked it wrong. I picked Cody to win. Um, I, I a, lot of people, a lot of people pick Cody and win, yeah. even people that I knew, yeah. which is all good, man. We're from the same town. <laughs> yeah, you're it's, from, it's, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, there's no hurt feelings from that. Maybe at that time, sure, there would have been a little bit, but now it's like it's all good. You, you, you know, you underestimated me, or, or they didn't, you didn't know me, so I can't blame you for not rooting for me. So you knew cute Cody. It's all good, bro. So yeah. one thing I got, we, one thing I asked about Cody. Um, I asked him, "Hey, how did this beef start?" Because it was, it was a lot of times in the regional scene, you don't get this, you this uh, Chael Sonnen versus Anderson Silva type beef, or or uh, Dominic Cruz versus Cody. I mean, you guys were beefing. You guys were talking on social media. He was calling you suck mouth. I think someone, either you or someone from your team, was calling him Cody nobody. And then there was a pushing yeah. match at the at the weigh-ins. I mean, you went in, you went in the room, and this room was rocking. You could hear the go Cody chants, the team Andre chants. CES was was loving it. They were pushing it. They were pushing the hashtag Cody or hashtag no, Norby or hashtag uh, Sukmantai. Like. It was there was a big thing, and it was. I mean, for the regional scene, I was excited. I was ex- I was excited. I had that thing taped on CES. I wasn't missing it. So he told us how the beef started. You let's hear your version of how the beef started. Um, I I honestly, um, a couple of years ago, he I heard this little kid, Cody, said he could beat me. I didn't know who he was. I knew he went to school with my brother. I was already established pro at the time. He was an amateur. And, um, you know, he just kept talking shit. That's just, he, if he's your friend, you know how he is. He's very he's confident. Not a secret. Cody, Cody is very, a very confident person. He's very arrogant. That's the word. Okay. Not confident. <laughs> he's very arrogant. Okay. You know, and, um, you know, whatever. He just kept running his mouth. And then, I guess, you know, uh, fast forward, um, he's winning fights as a, at the pro level. And, you know, I thought that he deserved a title shot. And, um... Of course, I deserved the title shot. I yep. was um, I fought for CES twelve times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, well, and and I was on a two fight winning streak. Why shouldn't I get the title shot at bantamweight? You know, and he was off a three fight win streak. So, you know, they wanted to match us up and. And you guys and both I, 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 and, and bro, I I didn't say anything. I he he's the one that was hyping himself up, saying that I got the fight because of him, and just hyping himself up, telling everybody. You know um, that he's gonna beat me and stuff, and I, I mostly just stayed quiet, man. I let my my friends and my fans talk for me. Yeah. Um, I didn't really say anything leading up to the fight. You know, in the interviews and stuff, I mm. I told the guy, I told you guys, the media, the press, what I was gonna do. I said, Cody's sleeping on my wrestling, and he's. I told the truth. He's very arrogant. He talks a lot of shit. I'm gonna make him eat his words, and um, he's. I'm going to beat him like a big brother beats his little brother. Okay. He's going to call me a big brother after that fight. <laughs> he, okay. But you know what? I beat him so bad, he should call me daddy now. He just calls you daddy. Okay. He should call me daddy now because I beat him up <laughs> so bad in that fight. But, you know, I told her, if you will go back and watch, I said that. And that's what I did. You know, I wasn't talking shit. I was, I was, I was being me, man. But him, he was being him too. But he was talking a lot of nonsense. Like, you know, and, um... That's just him, though. So, and in the weigh-ins, I pushed him because I'm a grown man. I have two kids, uh, two two boys. I'm not gonna see. I'm not gonna let my kids see uh, me weigh in, and then some kid, some punk, coming in and trying to ram his head against my face. Yeah. Hell no. Yeah. I felt. I saw that. I felt his head coming against my. I felt his head coming against my face. Oh, oh, I took his neck and I pushed him, and he went about ten feet back. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, I'm a grown man, bro. You don't do that to me. Yeah, you guys got I got, got, a, full, I got a full-time job. I feed two babies. I got a wife. 
Yeah. You kidding me, bro? And you guys had, you had, guys had to be separated. Um, obviously, yeah. they got separated. That was a that was a if a CES that was like a promotional. That was a but that was great. They were putting that all over the place. Um, yeah, um, I don't blame them. So, so, did you feel any 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 extra pressure because of all this? Because of the beef? Because of the pushing? Did you feel any extra? Or was it just like any other fight? I just wanted to get in there and beat his ass. It motivated, me, it motivated me more to, to beat the shit out of him. So I want to I want to go it. I want to jump right to the end of the fight. I mean it was it was a the first three rounds. Um, he was going for the takedown. You stuffed his takedowns. The first round you opened him up with some elbows. Just give, if anybody to see, I'm just gonna give a quick recap. You opened him up with some huge mm-hmm. elbows. Um, you stuffed his takedowns for three rounds. Fourth round he ended up getting you back. Um, yeah, looking for it, submission. Fourth round he had he had me in the fourth round. Yeah, I was a little tired. He had me in the fourth round. I got a little lazy with one, with one of my defenses and. He did something real slick, and he got my back. So, so I, okay. I give him credit. So then gets to the gets to the fifth round, and you land this flying knee. Now that knee is that something that you saw in Cody's game ahead of time that you thought would be there, or is it just something spur of the moment you just went for it? I didn't watch any video on Cody before my fight. So it was just um, it was there, and you just I, went for it. It was there, and I went for it, man. Um, I uh, I didn't want any questions asked, you know, and. You, I have 10 finishes under my 11 wins, you know? And the reason I didn't finish that other guy was because he was running the whole time. You oh. know, he was running a track meet when he was fighting me in the cage. Sure. So it was hard to finish him. You know, the black belt BJJ, I had to be careful too. So I couldn't just go into reckless. So, you know, but if somebody's going to fight me, um, <clears throat> and that's what Cody decided to do. I noticed that he decided to fight me for oh. a minute, which I said he decided to stand out with me for like 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah, and I knew right then and there that he was going to sleep. So you win, and the, he went to sleep. So you win the fight. It seems like the beef is squashed. Then last week we interviewed Cody. Like you said, you listened to the interview. Um, he was actually pretty complimentary of you. He he said, "Hey, I, my plan is going on one twenty five, but obviously if I get that that uh, call, I want to fight him. I think I can beat him." He's talked about going to different camps, and he talked about improvements. He thinks he could beat you because of his improvements. <laughs> um, the CES puts out an, an article. They tagged me in it. Because we had yep. an interview with him, and you are you. It, I don't know what happened to Adam, but that set you off. You were you went right away to like I'm sick of this guy. Yeah, I don't yeah, have very right funny. What what would, what was about it that that set you off? You know, I'm just be frank with it. Like you know, after the fight, I thought it was it was good because you know one of my best friends, my big brother Greg, he took Cody under his wing. Uh-huh. You know, and you know he's giving him all these things. Shh. No, it's not Uncle Sean, baby. Uh, <laughs> and um. He's, you know, he's trained, bringing him all these places, places that I used to train at before, sure. you know, and, you know, I even before one of his last fights, I went in there to say hi to Greg, and he was there, and I was like, hey, good luck, you know, but um, he's not my friend or anything, but yeah. um, it just, it just seems funny to me, you know, that, um, you know, all the, that um, all of a sudden he's training with all my old teammates and all my coaches, my old coaches. Yeah. That brought me brought me up in my in my in my pro career, and my and one of my best friends, you know, is, is training him, and now all of a sudden, he wants to like, start calling me out and saying that he wants a title shot and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, you trained at where I I used to mop the floors at every night at practice, those those floors, in bucket every night at the practice, okay? Yeah. Yeah, we're and gonna try my blood, sweat, and tears went into those mats. You know, um, I had a, I have a good relationship with the coaches. I went to their weddings. They came to mine. You know, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, I'm hearing that they want to fight for the title. You know, yeah. and that just irks me. You know, and I'm just like, wow, that's that's some snake stuff. So you don't you don't look at it as just a hey he I'm the champ. Of course they go and win the title. It's you taking it personal. Of course, of course, of course. Okay. I, 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 look, I look at it like I'm the champ. I, I know everybody's gonna gun for me, but I just. Um, and now you have a. Do you have a beef with the whole Triforce team, the coach? Greg? No, I don't, have, I don't. No, I don't have a beef with them. Okay. But I just think that, I just think that, um, you know, it, for me to beat his ass the way I did for five rounds, and knock him out like that, and embarrass him, and for him to go viral like that, being embarrassed. He shouldn't be calling me out like that. He shouldn't be saying he wants to fight for a title. He was, he was see the fight. I beat him up for for freaking four rounds, man. Beat him up bad. He couldn't do anything. And all of a sudden, he he, he trains with my old team, 
and all you know, Sidya Tong, you know, who, who I respect a lot. Yeah. And and I don't say anything he can beat me and stuff. That's stupid, man. It's old news to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm the champ. I I, I make the calls. You know what I mean? So just just is that a fight? If he wins, I, mean, I think he's got a very tough opponent, and and uh, David Garcia is fighting. Um, he, uh, Cody's been texting me. I've been hey, take, I told him hey, Cody. You know, I told him, hey, I'm interviewing Andre. He's like, hey, let's do a sit down thing. And I'm like, hey, let's fo- focus on, on on David Garcia first. And if we can figure out something from there, of course, you know I'm game. But uh, is that a fight, a matchup that you're interested in doing again, or is, you've already beat him? You're looking on to other. I, I honestly don't know, man, because I'm at that point in my career where I believe that I shouldn't be playing locally right now. I think I, I I belong fighting the best in the world. So Cody Nor- Norby. You know, he was like a roach to me before. Now he's like a little, little tiny ant. You know what okay. I'm saying? So I really don't care what that little, that little motherfucker wants to say. I really don't care. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay. So but, you, but you, you know, if he earns it, hey, if he earns it, and I'm still local, maybe. But I really. No man, I, I can't tell you that right now. Well, I'm actually we'll hoping that the rematch happens, but I actually hope that it happens in the UFC one day. That you guys both, you guys both make it in the UFC. You guys both wreck it up, and 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 you guys eventually can you could you could finish the beef would, in the UFC. I think that'd be great. Yeah, that'll be cool, you know. But um, you know, another thing I heard in the interview is like he was like one of my good friends and old coach Pete Jeffrey. Um, he's saying that. Coach Pete Jeffrey was telling him that you know he knows how to beat me and you know, uh, well, he, he has a way to beat me and stuff. Yeah, and that that that, that, that might kind of hurt me a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. That might have been in the article. I didn't read that article. It was he didn't say that in the interview with us. Um, that might yeah, have but been he in, said that in, uh, in with James Lynch. Okay, all right. I so didn't, yeah, but um, you know, it's it's over with. At the end of the day, you know, um, I don't. Th- I, I I'm not supposed to be thinking about this stuff when I'm at home with my kids sure. and my wife. Eating dinner after practice, sure. you know, and um, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna let that get to me, sure, because that would be wrong of me. That wouldn't be fair to my kids and my wife. But Cody doesn't understand that, you know. what I'm saying he wants to talk all this shit. Uh, he doesn't know that. I don't give a fuck because right. I have bigger things in front of me. You know what I mean? All right. So I, I, we we want to get you out of here because we we know. Um We've been on a long time. I don't want to hold you up. You have a family to get to. Um, we're gonna go to. Well, we have one last, uh, two last questions. I'm sorry. We're gonna go. We have this thing we call the fan form. This comes directly from a from a fan MMA. This one comes from uh, Johnny Mac in Pawtucket, our our home area. Um, says uh, Andre, do you have any superstitions or special traditions you do before a fight? I used to, not anymore. Now I just believe in my training. Just believe in your training. Was what was it, what was the old uh, superstitions or anything? Oh man, I come I come from a Buddhist background. So there's probably a ton Buddhist of culture. So there's a ton of them. My dad. Oh, you can go on, but okay. but me personally, I don't. <laughs> All right. So uh, my last question to you, Andre. I, we appreciate you coming on. Um, we think we thank you for uh, everything you've done. Um, you definitely were a great uh, guest. My last question to you, Andre, is is have you submitted to the takeover? My name is Andre Sukumtut, the Asian sensation, and I have submitted to the MMA takeover. Uh, we thank you so much, Andre. We wish you luck in everything you do in the next fight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be pushing uh, Andre to get him in the UFC. Uh, we wish you luck. Thank you so much, and uh, have a good night, Andre. Thank that, you, brother. That was uh, your interview of the week with Andre Sukumtut. And uh, make sure you check out theMMATakeover.com and like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.